We know why Baylor would want the number one kicking recruit in the country, but now we'll tell you why the number one kicking recruit in the country wanted Baylor. Or actually, he'll tell you. Unlocked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's up, Bears fans? It is Locked On Baylor, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas and The Cam Show on Rogue Media Sports Network. Today, we have a very special guest, and that is the number one kicking recruit in the country, Rhett Armstrong, who committed to Baylor just a few weeks ago. We're going to get his take on how tough it is out there for kickers in the recruiting process. It's not like any other position. Uh, why he was attracted to Baylor and why this Baylor thing goes deeper than just a few weeks ago. Uh, why he's wanted them for a long time. Plus, he has an awesome message for Baylor fans uh, to kind of get you through this season and bridge the gap between when those 25 and 20 class of 2025, class of 2026 stars are going to be coming in. So you've heard enough from me. Let's hear more from Red Armstrong the newest Baylor kicking commit. We are here with America's kicker, and that is Rhett Armstrong, one of the newest Baylor Bear commits in the class of 2025. Rhett, how is commitment life treating you? Fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. You know, it's takes a little burden off the shoulders going into season, and uh, I'm just super excited to be a Baylor Bear. Yeah, and I, I do always ask this for guys who are heading into their senior season, and I get a mixed bag of answers. So for you personally, was that something where you were like, I just really wanted to get this out of the way and focus on senior year of high school, which is one of the best years of your life? Yes, sir. Um, being someone who's graduating early in December, um, I really just wanted to focus on my last semester of high school that I get, you know, and and uh, the recruiting process can be a bit of a distraction to that. You know, there's a lot of things you need to do if you know if you're going on multiple visits every weekend you know it's you're you're away from senior life and so yeah i i really just wanted to have it out of the way and i'm really glad that i was blessed to be able to choose you know this summer and not have to wait on that yeah and, and we're going to talk a little bit about baylor specifically early on or later on excuse me but one thing that makes this this episode unique ret is i've had Plenty of commits on here before and never a kicker. You know, I've had, really? I've had, yeah, I've ne you're number one. You're the first one. <laughs> Let's so go. <laughs> that's going to be an answer to a very important trivia question someday. Um, but we've had, you know, receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and never a kicker. And I understand mm -hmm. that this is a completely different recruiting process and really a different football journey for most kickers. So was football always your sport were you a soccer guy who converted to football tell me kind of how you how you got into it and where we are now as the number one kicker in the country absolutely yes um my dad coached soccer at the university of illinois so i definitely had oh. a pretty good soccer background i never loved soccer um i, I would always just play it because you know he he was he really it. good do, at it do you watch I, soccer at all um, it's pretty tough to watch. Um, God, so I, don't you're like, I don't want to offend any soccer no, fans out right, there, but man. I don't enjoy watching soccer unless I have gotten into some Olympic soccer because gotcha. you know, it's pretty high stakes soccer. But so you, you went know, off to soccer the train. MLS. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I started at soccer, um, you know, kind of noticed I could hit the ball a little farther, a little higher than most other kids my age. I remember um, scoring from midfield on a kickoff, like the start, start of the soccer game was like, straight in the goal you know and that wasn't allowed but uh, my dad was like well you know there's Impressive something going on here yeah. yes for sure absolutely so he, he he noticed you know that i was getting a little bit more lift on the ball which is exactly what you need for field goal kicking so um one day he just put the ball in a cone a football in a cone and then you know i kicked it and it went in he was like well all right let's let's see if we can foster this a little bit Wow, this is this is like the great American story if David Beckham was American. You know what I mean? <laughs> like growing up in England, he had no choice, but he scores from beyond the halfway line. They'd be like, let's get this kid kicking some football. Exactly. Yeah, uh, for sure. How, how old were you when you started doing that, when you did the football in the cone? Eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah, it's been a long journey. Rhett, you realize, I mean, again, I don't talk to a lot of kickers, but – you realize a lot of them don't find out they're going to be like top end football kickers when they're eight years old. Yeah, it's uh, 
<laughs> it's definitely uh you know and it's another layer to that is my dad um went to the university of arkansas to kick actually um and switched to goalkeeper because he was like pretty down on the depth chart or whatever um he he doesn't mind me saying that but um you know, obviously he found his passion but um it's not like he's a stranger to kicking and that's definitely a blessing for me that he was able to you know spot it early and it's something that i grew to love really early because i think a lot of kids find it really boring you know it's repetitive and mm-hmm. not a ton of fun but for me it's it's kind of like the golfer's high in my opinion where you you hit a good one and you really like oh okay i want to do that again you know it just it gets addictive it really does that's an interesting way to put it. And I hadn't heard that before, you know, it kickers, they get the short end of the stick when it comes to football fans, but yet so many of those guys will, will watch golf and play golf. It's, it's, mm-hmm. I hadn't thought of it, but it's, I, you, I agree. It's very similar. Yeah. And so that said, you, you learn that you're going to be a kicker at a young age and you're starting to really enjoy it at a young age. So is that something you paid extra attention to when watching football on Sundays? Cause again, that's not, that's not ones that kids who grow up to even be football coaches are paying attention to. Yeah. I, I think, you know, to roundabout answer your question, um, you'll notice a couple of themes is that I have a lot of people around me at a young age that got me in the direction that I am now. And um, those people would be the Carlson brothers. I don't know if you know who they are. Um, Daniel Carlson is with the Raiders and Anders Carlson is with the Packers at the moment. Um, they're both from, the high school that I was going to go to. Um, I ended up switching high schools to Palm Ridge, but they both went to the classical academy, which is about 10 minutes from my house. Wow. Um, and so I've met them a couple of times when I was younger and kicked with them since then. And they've been awesome in the journey. But, you know, to answer your question, like, yes, I paid a lot of attention <laughs> to NFL kicking and college kicking while they're at Auburn. Um, and yeah, just to have those role models so early in life, um, they're amazing dudes. They're you know, just like who I want to be, if that makes sense, because, yeah. you know, they're men of faith and their kickball is really far <laughs> and they're great family guys. So those are two what, great what else things, do you right? need, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those that's, you're doing pretty well with that. Exactly. Double play, I would say. And I'm here to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. It is the only place that I go to buy tickets. So, look, if you're looking to see Red Armstrong kick the ball through the uprights a billion times for the Baylor Bears, the only way that that's going to do it for you is Game Time. Because if you don't want hassle, this is the only place to go. I go in there, I go in the app, I can see the all-in pricing right away. The price I see is the price I get, and I can also see the view from my seats right there. So I'm, I've am i got all the answers I need before I hit purchase, which is unlike any other ticketing website. Plus, they're the best for last-minute deals. So if you're like looking at your schedule, thinking, can I make it, can I not, or you're going out on a whim, always buy the tickets and save up to 60% off buying last-minute for anything that has a ticket. Sports, concerts, theater, comedy shows, any of that. Uh, They've got zone deals and flash deals going on throughout the week. Plus, they've got the lowest price guarantee or game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code locked on college, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, so let's flash flash forward a little bit because I was going to ask who you model your game after, but it's kicking. There's not a ton of differences anymore, right? Uh, And you obviously had some great inspirations there with the Carlsons. And Mm -hmm. you get to high school, you start putting the ball through the uprights quite a bit, uh, and you start to get attention. Was that something that took a while or were you suddenly flooded with letters or how did that process kind of start? So again, I got to imagine it's different from a kicker from a lot of skill position guys. Absolutely. Yeah. It's um, the kicking college recruiting process is very different from any other position. I think um, for us, you, you really start with um, Twitter, you know, you'll, you'll DM coaches your film and they'll maybe DM you first. And it, it really starts with camp invites um, you really don't get any real attention unless you've kicked in front of a coach at their camp. Um, kicking being something that's so, um, you know, repetitive, 
um, somewhat redundant. It's easy to just post your best kick of the day. And coaches don't know if you missed 20 kicks before that, you know. And so they, they need to see you right in front of them, you know, to really verify the talent first before they take you seriously. And so um, for me, it was the year after my freshman year going to all the college camps and doing really well as a freshman, you know, sometimes beating out some of the older high school guys that that got me more attention than um, any really the rankings have so far. And and that being said, do you feel like in that process you had a bit of a chip on your shoulder? You know, like you said, it's it's not as easy to get your the eyes on you. It's it's not as easy as just sending your tape like so many other positions can. So that did that come with like an extra chip on your shoulder through this process? I think so. Um, I think any athlete from Colorado knows that we are under recruited over here. Um, our in state schools don't recruit us. Our mm. out of state schools don't really recruit us. Um, in case you're wondering, haven't really gotten anything from the University of Colorado, but that's a side note. Um, <laughs> They're I'm lost. Just kidding They're with lost. you, but um, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things where we, as a state, are under recruited from our own schools and from the other states, and so um, you, you just have to be that much better to get the the attention that you you garner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that honestly, I mean, I don't want to sidebar this too much, but that that feels odd, you know, with how much Colorado has grown the last 20, 25 years and the and the players it's producing. I mean, the guy who's going to finish top five of the MVP every year, Christian McCaffrey, is from just mm -hmm. outside of Denver. And that's pretty insane that that the Colorado schools aren't capitalizing on that. But different that's for a different podcast for someone else because we got you down at Baylor. Uh, Absolutely. And, yeah. <laughs> and, we, and we do, we do pay attention to kickers no matter where they are, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, so Rhett, you, you, you start after your freshman year, start getting these, these, you know, going to these camps, getting in front of these coaches. Was there like a school in mind for you? You know, you, your dad coached at Illinois. He went to Arkansas. Was there a school in mind for you when you were like, when they offer, that's going to feel like I've, I've made it? Yeah. Um, man, it's, it's, uh, there's, there was a couple for me. And I, uh, we actually spent a little bit of time in Houston in seventh grade. Um, and, and we went to a Baylor game. We went to an AM game. Okay. And so I got to see, both of those fan bases. And that was, um, I believe 2020. So Baylor was getting pretty hot. Um, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, we were actually at that game where they ended up losing to Oklahoma, but we were, oh. you know, it was awesome. It was awesome for three and a half quarters. You know, that was but, great, man. <laughs> no, man. Shout out Justin or sorry, uh, Jalen. Oh, what, why am I totally blanking on his name? That he, game. He covered hurts. us. I'm not going to lie. Jaylen That's hurts. okay. Yeah. Jalen Hurts, yeah. There you go. I uh, like that pun. That was good. Th thank um, you, man. <laughs> Someone appreciates this. This is great. <laughs> it's yeah. Good. But, um, great you know, just seeing those two games, I really was like, man, if if A&M offers or Baylor, like, absolutely. You know, gotcha. like, i big fan of those two. Um, obviously, as time went on, um, you know, I, I was able to – kick for both and grow relationships with both. And I've now realized that Baylor is definitely, you know, the spot for me. Um, but I still have a little place in my heart for the Aggies. Just <laughs> that will bit. go away soon here. And, and, <laughs> and I asked that Rhett not to be like, Hey, what other teams do you like? It, it's more so that kind of what you said there is like, you have your dream schools in mind and then you start going through the process and you figure out what your priorities are and where their priorities are. And it sounds like it, it came through with that with Baylor. So tell me about your relationship with the coaching staff and, and how you got on Baylor's radar and, and how that's gone the last season or two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I haven't really been on Baylor's radar too much. Um, I was committed to the Air Force Academy. I'm not sure if you know this, but I was committed to the Air Force Academy until I believe it was um, May of this year. So this summer, um, you know, I, the air force coaches are s still the, some of the greatest men I met in the recruiting journey. Um, and they're some of the best coaches I met, but I just decided that I wanted to go a little farther from home than one, one exit down the road, um, which is the air force Academy. And so, yeah. you know, in in um, you know, leaving that commitment, and how hard that was. Um, Baylor was one of the first teams to reach out 
and say, Hey, we'd love for you to come, you know, come do a workout for us. Um, that was coach Pollard. And so and I was like, Oh, like, of course. Yes. Yeah. So we got, we got that booked. And, um, I actually have a good friend, Nate Bennett. He's a quarterback. Yeah. Um, I met him, met him a long, long, long time ago. And so, um, at a summer camp actually in Missouri, that was a good time. But, no um, I, I reached out to him and said, Hey, I'm going to be, be over there. You know, I'd love to see you. And so, you know, just started trying to, you know, make a couple of connections at Baylor before we got there. And, you know, Nate's been awesome through this process and, you know, putting my name in there. And obviously I went and kicked really well, but that helps for sure. sure. Um, and yeah. so, um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, Baylor has been a pretty recent, recent um, jump into that um, just because of my commitment to Air Force. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, that's friend of the show, Nate Bennett, by the way. So, really? Yes. That's something you guys now I'll have to find in. the episode. There you go. I, I, I was really just fawning over how great his hair was the whole time. It was almost embarrassing. I tried. Can't you she tell? I can see you're, you're, you're trying for it. Hey, it's a lot better than what I've got going. So I can't, you know, you, I would kill to have the, the hair. Going I don't have a good Baylor hat yet or else I'd probably be wearing it. I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to solve that for you. Um, and Brett, I, I do want to ask, you know, when you're looking at Baylor, because I think there are some things you've said in this interview so far that are, are pleasant to the ears of a lot of Baylor fans. And when you were looking at Baylor or at any school, you know, we, we've talked about what they, how they're finding you, but what are you looking for in a school? Maybe even more so than a football program. Sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, in my decision-making, um, there was a couple of things. There was school size. Um, there was obviously the football is a big part. Um, and then I think, one of the bigger parts is um, the faith values, you know, a place where I can foster my faith and grow as a man. And so um, Baylor obviously has a lot of that, you know, underlying faith values and their FCA is wonderful. And so I think that was a no brainer. Um, and, and honestly, you'd be surprised at how many schools I found that at. I think that's a very common trait of um, colleges that a lot of people don't know about right now. Um, so just a side note, but um you know, the academics at Baylor, top notch. Um, I want to go into some form of business, probably marketing. And, you know, they, Baylor has that, you know, in, in abundance. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> for sure. And then obviously the football, as we all know, has been something we've all watched since we were, you know, children. And so yeah. <laughs> um, shout out RG3 and all of that. So, <laughs> okay. So um, my man knows his Baylor history. All right. That's a good start it's hard here. to miss that one. Not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. That's a good start. Then there's it. John Mayers, but. <laughs> You know, yes, the miracle John. kick TCU. Yes, I was yes. there. It was right in he front. He actually of me. reached out to me, and it was a great day in my life. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. How did that? How did that go? How did that come about? Uh, well, I I committed, and and like a couple oh, okay, hours okay. after I committed, he said, "Hey, congrats, like on your commitment." And I was like, "Dude, no way! Like this is the guy." You know, that's that. And and John Mayer's, which I'm sure you know, if you watch Baylor football, you'll know that that was kind of the turnaround of Baylor's fortunes in the kicking game. As great as mm -hmm. their offense was, they had some lean years in the kicking department and yes. it has been up and down, but really mostly up since then. Um, mm -hmm. So love that. Love that. John Mayer's the old mutton chops himself, man. That's awesome. Still got uh, it. He still got it. He still got it. And you, you talk about that, that faith aspect. And obviously that's a big part of Baylor. That's, that's mm -hmm. a big part of the entire university. And it's something you had mentioned earlier in your answers. So how much of that was part of the sell from Baylor in terms of the non football things? How much did they try to sell you on that? Um, I don't think it was something they really had to sell. Um, okay. okay. Coach Aranda is very, you know, outspoken about where he stands. And I actually had a great conversation with him on my visit about, you know, his philosophy as a coach and how that ties into it. And, you know, I, I, I know a lot of, of, of people who attend Baylor um, as students just from different walks of my life. And, you know, they all were able to speak into how that's impacted them. And so they, they never really needed to sell that for me. I was already very, very aware of that. And, you know, obviously Nate was able to speak to that as well because he's great, great guy. So. Looking at this 
this recruiting class, this 2025, the last month has been just incredible for Baylor to, to build that class and start the foundation. Some pretty good pieces of foundation for the 2026 class as well. So how much were you paying attention to that, uh, you know, in the weeks leading up to your commitment and the, the week and a half since uh, of what Baylor has been able to do on the recruiting trail coming off a disappointing season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that it was very exciting to see that start to ramp up because I was very, very into Baylor before all of that started happening. But then, you know, I, I kind of, I got my offer around the same time that um, a couple of key guys, um, I'm not sure if it was Taz, but I think it might've been Taz committed a couple of days there before or after that. And it was like Baylor Twitter just came out of the woodwork. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't even know all these existed, you know, the, the Baylor burners or, and whatnot. Yes, so, they're here yeah. um, they're in, all over the place. Right. So see, seeing the fan base, um, you know, get excited for those guys and, you know, just seeing how they interact with other fan bases as well. Um, was, was it super exciting for me? Um, so yeah, I paid a lot of attention to it for sure. Um, I wouldn't say it made like a massive, um, massive, like part in my decision, but, I will say it's it's super fun to be a part of and you get to get to witness for sure because it seems like the energy is very different um, than it has been in yeah. the past. Yeah, I mean, really, we were looking at that beginning of July and thinking, oh, is this the class? I mean, some good pieces, but then they start coming in over and over and mm -hmm. over. And, you know, you mentioned that you, you're friends with Nate Bennett, so I'm sure you've heard a lot from him about the about the program inside and out. But have you heard from anyone else who is committed in the 25 class? Like, have they reached out to you before or after your commitment at all? Absolutely. Yeah, I've heard from a couple of guys, um, okay. you know, before and after. So they're they're good peer recruiters, you know, and I, I think that's another special part about Baylor is that, you know, typically a kicker wouldn't get that kind of, you know, uh, peer, peer attention. And so that was super fun to see how they, they do care about, you know, even the smaller pieces, I think. And obviously, but we know special teams matters, but, um, you know, I don't necessarily impact our recruiting class rankings because 24 seven doesn't really rank kickers until late signing day and yeah. whatnot so to see them you know pursue someone that doesn't necessarily give them immediate benefit on the you know social media stage is pretty neat you know it shows that there's a a uh, a certain priority in the right place yeah now rhett this next question i'm going to give to you is is something that's for the fan base's insecurities and sometimes my own insecurity, okay? I'm not going to okay. put you on the spot, but I'm just going to ask kind of a vague portion of it. So a lot of people, whenever we do these commitments, people will get in the comments and say, yeah, but if if they're three and nine again or they're four and eight, none of them are going to stay. And we all have that thought creep into our mind, right? What if this goes haywire? What's going to happen with this next class? So you've mentioned so many times about how, you know, Baylor didn't need to sell me. I liked it, you know, and I like this program. I like this coaching staff. So how much do you actually pay attention to like what's going to happen this year versus, Hey, I, I'm not coming until next year. And this is what they've sold me on. And, and this is what the other players in my class are talking about is next year. So how much do you even take into account what goes on the field goes on, on the field this year? Yeah. Um, I think, um, people may have a potentially valid argument until you realize that all of these kids are committing on the basis that we know we have something special and we know that this year doesn't have a hold on, you know, that, that fact. And so, you know, all of the commits are in the same, same viewpoint that, you know, what we're doing is larger than this year and we are building something for the coming years and to make somewhat of a movement. Um, I think that's abundantly obvious, especially with the NIL um, standpoint that Baylor is taking that there's, there's changes um, and those changes are for the better and those changes take some time. Um, so I obviously don't believe that Baylor is going to be three and nine this year, but it doesn't give me any lost sleep if they are, don't worry. I don't think any other recruit is in this, a different boat as well. I think we're all under the agreement that this year, has no pull on whether we're there or not. You're not going to see guys disappear. If you know, if if Baylor wins zero games, no one's disappearing. We're we're sticking around because we we believe that by the time we're seniors, Baylor's going to be a very very different football program. 
Have you ever thought about becoming a therapist or a politician? <laughs> that, that was like the most perfect reassuring answer to everyone who's been in the comment section. Wow. Awesome. And and you got people who are listening to it. As they're listening to it right now, they are they are about to run through a brick wall. So uh, <laughs> two more questions. I wish they all got the same opportunity I do to get to run through a brick wall for Coach Aranda. I mean, come on. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. And yeah. I'm sure all of us would do it still, uh, no matter the record. So uh, two more quick questions for you before I get you out of here. First one is, you know, you talk about graduating early. You, you've made your commitment now. You're looking at Baylor. You're locked in on Baylor, locked on Baylor. And so what is the thing you are most looking forward to in terms of getting to campus? I heard there's something with with the lemonade. Is that it? Uh, something they, going there's on. Pops, there's Pops Lemonade. That's usually around campus. They also We also have Dr. Pepper Hour. Are you Dr. Pepper guy? I'm a big Dr. Pepper guy. Oh, yeah, I heard there's man. I heard there's some good traditions. I'm really oh, looking man. forward to jumping in on that. Oh, wait till you hear about this. Every Tuesday afternoon, brother, you go in three o'clock, Dr. Pepper hour, Dr. Pepper floats on in the student union. No it is way. One of like two or three places in the entire world you can get an authentic Dr. Pepper float. Now that is Dr. Pepper with a scoop of bluebell vanilla ice cream just the way the lord intended gotta have the blue you bell. are gonna love that. gotta have the bluebell yes god's gift oh man this is this could not have gone any more perfectly i mean <laughs> the last answer and then the dr pepper answer might love be it. even better so we're gonna have to get you and if you go enough you become part of the dr pepper hour club so you can actually get your name on a plaque I used really? to call this all the time as admissions again. So uh, this this is big for you, Rhett. I'm going to be looking okay. for your name there. My name uh, is going to be on a plaque. I guarantee you. 100%. Yes. That and the award for kickers whose name I don't remember. I only remember the Ray Guy one. Um, that's okay. That's for punters. Um, but, Rhett, last question for you. Uh, and it is about the profession, the the, mm -hmm. the art of kicking, if you will. We talked about early on how much kickers get slighted and people just toss out that part of the game. I have argued that's such a big part of the game when you have a good kicker. It's like that Kanye line, having mm -hmm. money's not everything, not having it is. So if you don't have a kicker, you realize how important that is. So what is something that you want to tell the public about the kicking art that you think they're not getting right now? Like what, what is the mm. message from a kicker to the people who don't appreciate kickers? Man, um... You know, I I, uh, I made a video on my Instagram actually about why kickers miss kicks, and I think it's a actually pretty interesting watch um, at ret dot fifteen. Hope you don't mind the shout out. Yes, but, that's what I was going to ask. Um, I was going to ask at ret dot fifteen. Sorry about it. <laughs> Thank you. I only have your um, Twitter one up there, so that works. But I think it's it's uh it's important to understand all the factors that go into kicking um, to appreciate it. Not to say that any of those are excuses for misses because. Mm -hmm. Almost all of those factors are, should be taken care of before you ever attempt a kick. Um, that's off-season fundamentals, uh, you know, snap, hold, kick. That should have been taken care of. But I think it's important to know those things. And I think secondly, um, I think people should also know that a kicker's goal should be to kick so well that you're never really in the spotlight, that you're just, mm. oh, this is a make and we all move on. You know, I don't think a kicker should ever really be two in the spotlight or two, you know, in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. You know, it's, you should kind of be steady, just make kicks. You know, you don't, not a lot of news about you. You just do your job and you do it really well. Um, I think that's an ideal spot to be as a kicker instead of, you know, some other positions that are trying to make headlines. It's usually not the best when you're making headlines as a kicker. So it's like an um, umpire. Two, two little yeah. tidbits for it. Yeah. Perfect. Sure. I, I can see an NIL t-shirt later on. Just make kicks. Yeah. Just make kicks. It's perfect. It's yeah. like leg, Nike legs, really arm better. strong, leg strong, or just make kicks. There's so many, so many opportunities for sure. <laughs> Man, get to working on that. Okay. This is part of the marketing. Okay. This yeah. is where it starts right here. You wouldn't believe the amount of Rhett leg strong jokes I got on that commitment <laughs> post. I mean, I think I counted at least 15. I ha I'm going to be embarrassed. I, I hadn't even thought of that, but that is a great, that is a great nickname. If you can even call it, that's basically your whole name. Um, but Rhett. Basically. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Can't wait to see you on campus, hopefully with a Dr. Pepper float in your hand. Absolutely. Thank you, Cam, for having me.